Hello, and welcome to ASMR Tirar de Hoyo. Are you hoping to calm your mind, relax your body, or experience ASMR? Dr. Andrew Michaels is here to help you. Please note that this episode is part one of a story not recommended for the faint of heart or queasy stomachs. Because today, Dr. Andrew Michaels has been called in to consult on a truly disturbing case. And there doesn't seem to be any way that our doctor will make it out unscathed. Okay, what are we dealing with today? Oh no, not another one. You've got to be kidding me. Did you contact the press? Okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we let the press have this or not. This is the third one this week. This is bad. Was it a man or a woman this time? A woman. A housewife. Okay, that's... That's different. Now, take me in. Let me see the body. Oh, my God. You poor baby. How could she do that to herself? Is this how you found her? Okay, the husband. The husband found her. Okay. So he disturbed the body. I understand. It's, um... You can see, I can see now that you've told me that. I can see the marks in the blood trail. No, no, I understand. He, he needs to be questioned, but there's, there's no doubt. We have a uh, copycat on our hands. We have to, uh, I don't know if we should report this or not. It's one of those stories where if you let it out, the cat is out of the bag, as they say. There's no putting that genie back in the bottle. I'm whispering because I don't know what to tell everyone. I don't know what to say. I have never dealt with anything like this before. I see she used the same method. You don't understand it? Well, it's really simple. She gets a broom handle and a spool of fishing string. She attaches these fish hooks you see right here one at a time to a length of fishing string. She then dips them in oil so they slide down her throat more gently. And one at a time, she swallows the fish hooks down into her stomach. They travel gingerly at best, down her throat and into her stomach cavity, one at a time she dies off the fish hooks, dips them in oil, places them on her tongue, and swallows them. One by one. She stands up once she has put many into her stomach and checks the length 
a fishing line. Not all the lengths are the same. So she takes a pair of scissors and cuts them so that they are all of equal length. Then she takes a broken broom handle and one by one ties every single string to the broom handle. It's a tedious, long, troublesome process to get the length right every time. She has to get the length right, or the experiment won't work so well. She winds up the broom handle until she has to bend over for it to touch the ground. She places her feet on either side of the fishing strings that are tied tightly and wrapped around the fishing pole. The broom handle has now become a fishing pole of sorts. And her own weight presses the broom handle tightly to the ground. She has been over, not quite in position, she removes her feet and rolls it one more time to get the proper tight tautness on the fishing lines. By this time, her stomach has been churning, tasting the oils, the metals of the fish inside her belly, moving them around into random places as they slowly grab onto the cell walls of her stomach lining. Some already cutting into her abdomen from all the movement of the fishing lines outside her body. It's quite an arduous process to go through, and it's troubling what happens next. As you could see, she places her feet once more on either side of the broom handle. All of the fishing lines tight and taut of the same length, ready ready to set the hook. You may not know fishing, but you jerk the rod to set the hook. And in this case, her head bent all the way over at the waist, 90 degrees. All she has to do with either foot on either side of the broom handle is in one solid, fast motion. Stand up. And she stood up. And she set the hooks deep inside her body. I can't even tell you what it's like to look upon something like this. 
so close to Halloween, it's disturbing that something like this has even happened more than once. Not twice, but three times, and three times with three different people, totally not connected, random victims. I can't even tell you that it's a suicide, when in my heart, I believe this is a murder. I do. I believe this is murder of the most evilest of times. I'm struck by it, struck like lightning. How does he get them to do it? How does this devil get inside their minds and make her do this, make him do this, two men and a woman? Who is next? It's almost like a plague, like a disease upon the people, like they have no control to stop themselves. I can't comprehend what it would take to do something like this to yourself. It's beyond my understanding. I can understand one person finding a unique way to end their life, but three doing it exactly the same way. Look at the way she wrapped the strings clockwise around the broom handle all in the same direction the knots are all the same the pattern is the same and an accurate count of those fishing lines will show they use the exact same amount one hook tied off to the string at a time, dipped onto a plate of oil, one at a time, laid upon their tongue and slipped down their throat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it goes on. And it goes on. How do you do this to yourself? Look at her. She was a beautiful woman. Look at this house. Her husband, an accomplished and professional man. She wanted for nothing here. They had means. She had methods available to her. But she chose this path. I'm hearing now that she was a kind woman, just like the other two victims. A selfless person. Not an evil bone in their body. So where does this start and where does it come from? This evil that has entered into my world. I'm willing to take your suggestions on how we should proceed. This is beyond my understanding and my scope of training. You do understand how she died. You do. She collapsed from the pain onto her back. Lying there writhing in pain, twitching, convulsing. The blood from her stomach, the blood from her throat, the lines tangling up inside her esophagus. She began to choke to death. 
she lie in her own blood and choked slowly to death as she convulsed and convulsed, unable to speak, unable to call for help, unwilling to call for help. And she laid there and died alone, the most horrendous death, only for her husband to come and find her, lying in this puddle of blood, lying there stiff and cold. It took her hours to prepare, hours to die, as she bled out slowly from one ruptured blood vessel to another. It's not a fast death. It's a slow and torturous death, almost like being hung backwards from the inside out. Not a quick snap of the neck, but a long and drawn out ripping and rendering of the blood vessels, the soft, warm, protected blood vessels inside your body. They were never, never built for this kind of destruction and damage. I know this is disturbing, and I know this may not be what you were looking for today when you came to this crime scene with me, but we are challenged, challenged to figure it out. We must figure this out. We've got to see it through. No, I don't have any desires. No, I've never felt like putting anything like that in my mouth. What's wrong with you? No, 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 don't be quiet now. If you have something on your mind, tell me. It's all right, I, I'll listen. You're just in shock. You're letting this get to you. Do you need to see a physician? Because you can't be going around thinking those thoughts in your mind. For all I know, this is how the killer spreads this disease. How long have you had these feelings? These desires? No, it wouldn't feel good. No, it wouldn't let anything out. I'm glad you told me. We've got to get you some help right away. You're looking right at her. And you think this is an envious position to be in for her? I'd like you to hand me over your weapon and your badge. Right now. Now just hold still. Don't get scared. Officer, come here. No, no, no. You're all right. I'd like you to take Officer Brown and put him in the back of uh, your cruiser. Okay. I'll just stay there with him. I'll be out in a little bit to see you. Okay? Once I'm done in here. Just relax. You're not in custody. We're just going to take you down to the station for some questions. Maybe you're a little overly tired. You just need to relax. Go back there and sit down. And you'll feel better. Okay? Officer, what are you doing? Why are you putting those in your pocket? That's evidence. Please put that package of fish hooks back on the table where you found them. You're not even using gloved hands. What's wrong with all of you? Why are you looking at me this way? Where is he taking Officer Brown? Where do you 
Where do you men think you're going? We're at a crime scene here. We, we have a duty. We have to do our due diligence. Where do you men think you're leaving? Where are you going? Bring those hooks back, officer, right now. Hand them to me. Hand them to me now. What's going on here? They've all left. The fishing line is, is gone too. What is happening to my world? What is happening to my, my men? I don't have their thoughts in my mind. I'm repulsed by all this. I sit and I stare at the victim's husband as he shakes his head. We are standing on the outside, looking in at a problem that is spreading. This is spreading like a virus. What is making these people do this? We've got to get out of here. We've got to leave this place. Leave this city. We've got to go somewhere. Are you able to drive? Good. I'm going to go home. Find my family. And make sure they're okay. And then we're leaving. As I drive home, the radio is interrupted by an announcement that there is a run on hardware stores, Walmarts, and fishing supply places all along the Tri-City area. It's spreading beyond the borders of my town past the borders of this city. I might be too late to solve this crime. A curse upon the land on Halloween, a curse brought on by a demon, by a criminal, by a mastermind much stronger than myself. I fear for my community fear for my family as I pull into the driveway and I walk up to the door. I slowly slide my key into the lock and feel the deadbolt slide back. They're not home. I push open the door and the door hits something. It's my son, my son lying behind the door, a bundle of fishing line wrapped around a broken broom handle lying near his feet. I catch my breath. I step over him and search. My house is empty. My wife and my daughter are gone. I try to control my breathing, try to control my fear, try to control all of these things. I reach over and I actually pinch myself. I pinch myself hard, slap myself, hoping it's a dream, hoping I'm in a nightmare that this isn't happening as I hear the gurgled screams down the street my neighbors stumbling from their houses the fishing line and the rod bumbling, tripping them up as they fall and collapse in the yards around my neighborhood they're all doing it they're all falling victim to this crime they're all dying front of me, slowly, slowly bleeding out and choking to death in front of me, 
This has to be a nightmare. It has to be a dream. It can't end like this. It can't end like this. I awaken. My breathing very labored. My body completely covered in sweat wet around my neck. The blankets, I must have pulled them completely up around my head. I reach over instinctively and put my hand on my wife's back. She's warm. She's there. All is right in the world. It's still dark outside, so I take a deep breath and sit up reach over to check my alarm clock. 3.35 a.m. Okay, that's normal. I'm working too much. I pick up my phone, check my messages. It seems I have a voicemail. I play it back to myself. It's my wife, and she says, I'm sorry, honey, but I can't go on. I want you to know I always love you. And the phone line goes dead as her phone falls from her hand and strikes the ground. I turn. I pull her warm body towards me and roll her over. To see the last gasps of life leaving her body. She fell on the bed in a fetal position as she laid down to die beside me. My work clothes still on. I must have passed out from shock. I must have fallen asleep. I, I, I failed her. I failed them all. And I'm alone now. And I wonder, as this demon, as this monster chose, all of those t to die, as the tears well up inside my eyes, as my hands hold my mouth from crying out loud in fear of being discovered, I have to ask the other question. Were they all chosen to die? Or did he choose me to live? Was I chosen to live and see all this? The madness. The madness. I slip into the madness of it all. Thank you for joining us for ASMR Tirar de Cuello. Please take a moment to rate and review this podcast. 
If you are interested in additional ASMR content, you may view our library of videos at youtube.com slash The theme song, Atlantis, is by Jason Shaw of audionautics.com and is used by permission. Correspondence, including questions or requests, may be sent to tirardojeo at gmail.com. On behalf of Dr. Andrew Michaels, thank you.